All right, new tube, it is Mr. Mean coming at you this fine Monday morning. It is 9.30 a.m. on April the 22nd on a very gloomy, rainy April day uh, here in a very lovely Duluth, Minnesota. Uh, let me adjust my camera. I should have done that beforehand. Uh, get some housekeeping out of the way. Let's push that back a little bit so you don't see my ugly mug all up in your screen. Uh, we're going to go over a couple little things today. Today is going to be a little bit of everything. Uh, first of all, let's get some housekeeping out of the way. Please like and subscribe. Hit that bell up there to be dinged when I dong so that you'll be notified when I post a new video or go live, which happens fairly often. Uh, uh, if you want to donate to the channel, it's always much appreciated. The money goes into helping support my family and keeping the channel alive. Uh, you can reach out to me on zellypay.com, Z-E-L-L-E-P-A-Y.com, and you can just do that through your bank. Most banks are set up with Zelly Pay, and it's free for you and free for me, and the money comes out almost instantaneous and gets to me almost instantaneous. So uh, there's no middleman fees. Uh, it's pretty awesome and uh, helps out the channel a lot. And if you want to send a no donation, it's J, as in the letter J, P-O-L-A-C-K, at gmail.com. So... Uh, I'm also on MeWe and Discord. Pop in over there. There's links off of my channel. Uh, as always, if they're not working, please let me know. Uh, but they should be. And uh, love to chat with you. Uh, we've seen the channel's grown. We're up to like 484 uh, subscribers now. So thank you guys to everybody who's liked and subscribed. Um, I think last week when I did my thing, I was at 471, 473. Uh, last uh, Tuesday, I think it was. And so we've jumped... 10, 10, 12 new subscribers in the last week. So thank you guys. Uh, appreciate it. Thanks to everyone who's new and has joined the channel. Uh, I hope you enjoy the content. If there's a game you want to see reviewed or whatever, feel free to send me a PDF copy. Uh, legally, of course. Please don't pirate. Um, and uh, I'll be more than happy to review it. If you're a small publisher and you want your product reviewed, uh, here's the place to do it, man. I will give an honest opinion. Uh, I'm Mr. Mean for a reason. I don't pull punches. Uh, in all fairness, though, I'm a huge RPG lover, so there's very few games that I don't like. Uh, they may have uh, qualities that I'm not particularly fond of, but uh, I, most games have some sort of redeeming quality. Uh, there's very few that hit my radar that I don't like, and I've done reviews of them. Uh, but uh, So that's housekeeping out of the way. A big shout-out and a thank you to all the new subscribers. Uh, appreciate it. Much love to all of you guys. I hope you're enjoying the content. And as always, you know, tell your friends. Help let's grow the, let's grow the meanies. Uh, hit me up on Discord. I'm always willing to chat on Discord um, about various games. I run games on Fantasy Ground. I'm getting ready to uh, hopefully schedule a Simba Room game. Uh, it's going to be a one-shot, maybe a two-shot. So if you're interested in that, hit me up on Discord and uh, join the channel there, and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, what else is coming up? Oh, my wife, awesome as she is, found an awesome little convention here in Minnesota. It's about four hours away. Uh, it's right at four. It's like three hours and 51 minutes or something. Four hours. Um, in Austin, Minnesota, which I think is funny because we moved from, you know, Beaumont, Texas. And obviously Austin, Texas is a big music scene and a foodie scene. And we love Austin, Texas. We, we've been there a couple of times. Uh, but uh, I just think it's funny. It's Austin, Minnesota. <laughs> My wife's like, there's a convention in Austin. And I'm like, honey, I'm not driving to Texas for a convention. <laughs> and she's like, no, no, it's Austin, Minnesota. And I was like, oh, wow, okay. Uh, so we looked it up. Uh, it's feasible for us to go. We were able to find a, a, a decent hotel uh, you guys know, you've heard me bemoan my situation, but money's tight, but, uh, we're going to use it as our, our summer vacation, uh, to get, to get away. And, uh, it's, it's going to, we're going to get away for two days and, uh, go and enjoy, uh, the convention. It's a very small convention, but what's cool about it is, um, all the money that they generate goes to autism, uh, which is very cool. Uh, for those that don't know, my younger brother is autistic. Um, and so this is uh, near and dear to my heart. And uh, so I'm going to go there. So if you're going to be in Austin, Minnesota, or anywhere near it, the week of the 3rd through the 5th, uh, pop into Ostacon um, and check me out. Come say hi to Mr. Mean. Get your picture taken with an internet celebrity. Because, yeah, I'm so big. Uh, 
But the point is, is come in, stop by. I might even do a live broadcast if I can. I'm going to bring my Mac, and uh, it's got a decent camera and microphone built into it. So I might just do a, a quick blurb, a shout out. Um, there's also very cool in Austin, Minnesota, for you, yous that don't know. My Brooklyn came out there. I'm sorry. Uh, there is a spam museum. <laughs> Like, yes, Spam, the canned meat. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of Spam. I grew up on Spam. So I uh, lived in Hawaii for a while, and uh, I'm a huge fan of Spam. So I'm pretty excited, believe it or not, to go visit the <laughs> Spam Museum. So, um, yeah, if you're going to be in that neck of the woods in, a, in two weeks, uh, or uh, is it two weeks or a week and a half? Let's look at the calendar here. Um yeah, two weeks. Yeah, so not this weekend, but the following weekend. It starts on Friday the third, and it goes till Sunday the fifth. Um, we'll be there uh, Saturday and Sunday. So feel free to pop in and say hi to Mister Mean. Uh, I will be running Simba Room. I'm going to run a, a three-hour demo of Simba Room. There is a game taking off right after that, in that time frame at one o'clock. So I'm running from ten to one, and then I have to beat feet. Uh, at about 12.50, I'll, I'll wrap up my game. Uh, they ask that you end your game 15 minutes early for etiquette, you know, clean up the room and everything and, and make it ready for the next people. So pretty excited about that. Uh, but there's some new RPG there that the guy, I guess, lives in that area, and he's trying to promote it. So I thought I'd, I'd go uh, show him some love and uh, play in his game, uh, which starts at 1. I think it goes from 1 to 4. So pretty excited about that. Going to check it out. But I wanted to run. I love this game. I think it's a very cool game. Uh, and it's weird because I love chucking dice. And in this game, the GM doesn't chuck dice. Um, if you haven't seen Simba Room and you don't know much about it, go back in my archive. Look at my video review. I've done, I think, two videos on Simba Room. I talk about it uh, after action report. Uh, and then also my review of Simba Room. Um, it's a good game. It's a fun game. Uh, it's... Uh, uh, it's Modifius now hosts it, so if you want to buy it and you live in a remote area where you can't pick it up, you can always go to Modifius.com. A shout out to Modifius. Uh, I am a demo person for Modifius, so I can run Infinity or Mutant Chronicles or Conan or Star Trek. I have those games. Um, so if you're running a local convention in the area and you want Mr. Mean to come and run games for you, uh, I'd be more than happy to do that, and I can I can support those um, any of the Modifius games. So, but they now uh, sell Modifius. Uh, Modifius sells this through their web store. This is part of Free League Publishing. Uh, it's a Swedish based game. Like I said, go to my review, check it out. Um, pretty excited. Um, Simber Room is a great game. The monster manual, basically their codex for their monsters, just uh, did had a I believe the Kickstarter is over and was successful. I was not able to back it. So if uh, anybody gets it as a PDF and wants to send me a copy, that would be awesome because I would love to, to, to peruse it, obviously, and uh, keep it backed up on my hard drive for, for you. I'm, I'm willing to do that for you. But, uh, yeah, or if the guys from Free League watch my video on Modifius and want to send me a copy, that would be awesome. Uh, but anyway, huge fan of uh, Simba Room. Um, I really like the game mechanic. I like the storytelling of it. Uh, I like the world setting. So I've been reading up a little bit on the background and checking up as much stuff, watching some Let's Plays. I've run it a couple times. I'm, I'm pretty confident with the rules, but it never hurts to brush up. And I'll be running a convention game, so it'll be fast and, and furious. So pretty excited about that. So definitely come down. That I'll be running that on Saturday the 4th uh, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. or 12.40, 12.50-ish. Uh, like I said, you gotta you gotta clean up uh, for the next game that comes into that room. Uh, so and then I have to beat feet over and go play in that open that demo game, which I'm really looking forward to. Uh, to try to give them some love and some support. Now I'll, I'll try to take a bunch of pictures and then post them up uh, on my video uh, when I come back uh, and do my uh, after con report on Tuesday. Uh, Monday we're traveling back to Duluth, and so I'm not gonna try to get a video done on Monday. Um, the second game I'm running that I'm also excited about is on Sunday at noon, I'm going to be running Green Ronin's Modern Age. Uh, now, for you purists out there, especially of the Mutants and Masterminds thing, they'd say it's Green Ronin. I know Chris Primus. I know Nicole. Um, I know Hal Mangold. Love those guys to death. I've, I've, I've went to conventions with them and stuff. And I know they, they, they say Green Ronin. I'm from Brooklyn. That's stupid. I'm sorry. It's Green Ronin. It's Ronin. R-O-N-I-N. You can say it however you want. 
Mr. Mean is going to say it the way he says it. So Green Ronin's game, I love it. I love fantasy. I fell in love with Dragon Age, played the the, the video games, and of course, uh, Chris Pramas had an idea for a game mechanic system, the Age system, and uh, which stands for Adventure Game Engine, if you did not know. That's why um, usually they capitalize Age in all their games. So, And of course, from Dragon Age, we got Fantasy Age, and we also got Titan's Grave uh, from... Uh, from uh, Will Wheaton or Titan Age, Titan Grave, Titan Age. I don't remember. Um, anyway, that's his sci-fi fantasy, steam fan. I, it's not steampunk, but his his fantasy, sci-fi fantasy uh, game, which is actually pretty pretty decent if uh, if you like that kind of stuff. Uh, and Will Wheaton's channel's got a live play where they do a couple thirty minute episodes or forty five minute episodes, and they go for a season. Uh, I. Th- think they got approved for season two, but I don't know if it started filming yet or not. It may be out. If it is, send me a link. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, totally down for it. I would watch it. I enjoyed the first season uh, very, very much. So, yeah, but uh, this is... And then, of course, Dragon Age led into uh, Green Ronin, uh, you know, doing the license on their own and making their own property that wasn't associated with Bioware, and that was called Fantasy Age. And that's a phenomenal game. If you like an open world fantasy setting fantasy age is, is righteous it's great i've got the bestiary for it i've got the gm screen and i've got the the core book um this came across my radar when it came out i didn't have the money to they did a pre-order system green ronin does not do kickstarter very much which i'm grateful for um if you want to know my beef against kickstarter go back and watch uh my monty cook uh with james gantry where we talk about the problems of kickstarter and, and why it's it's wrong um well not wrong it's broken um and companies are misusing kickstarter i feel and so does james so we're on the same page there but green ronin doesn't do that they they do they do do a pre-order uh, program on their website um and typically when they pre-order a book when you buy it through their website you get a pdf copy of the game i didn't do that because i didn't have the money I, the, the last two years have been really rough for mr mean and his family off and on with unemployment and you know, we moved to Minnesota to get away from Hurricane Harvey in Texas and the, the depressed economy just to come to a new depressed economy. Uh, there's no IT jobs here, man. I'm, 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 I'm looking and looking and looking and I'll find something. I always do. But it's few and far between. So we're just trying to keep a roof over our head and keep our, our spirits up, which you guys are awesome about that because I get a lot of awesome feedback from you guys and I really appreciate it. Uh, it keeps me doing these and uh, it keeps my head up. So... Uh, yeah, so anyway, Fantasy Age led to Modern Age. Uh, there's, uh, on the forums, there's a lot of, I don't want to say hate because that's a strong word. There's a lot of derision uh, towards uh, Green Ronin and their release schedule. And I think what a lot, and there's a lot of bemoaning of, you know, the, the too far in between releases and they're, they're giving, you know, more attention to this game as opposed to this game. And, you know, yada, you know, and, and this isn't being done and this is, and you guys got to remember Green Ronin is a small company. Uh, uh, Chris and Nicole, are, you know, husband and wife team. Uh, and how is an outsider that works? I mean, it's a company, sure. They're they're incorporated as a business, but it's not like they have a corporate office and thirty employees running around. They, they, these guys work out of their home. Uh, you know, they they basically run a full time. You know, they work full time and they do this. Uh, and you know, people like the modern age fans and the Dragon Age and the Fantasy Age fans, Titans Grave fans are all bemoaning that Mutants Chronicle gets all these books, uh, not Mutant Chronicles, Mutants and Masterminds gets all these books. Where's our book? Uh, they got to go with make what makes them money, guys. And like I said, they're a small company. They're a company of like three or four people. Everybody else is working remotely all across the country doing their thing. And they also all have full-time jobs. So it takes time and please bear with them. They are getting the product out. It just takes a little while. And on top of that, they have families. They have mouths to feed. Uh, you know, they, they have other responsibilities as well. And so be a little patient. Be a little understanding. Mutants and Masterminds makes them money. So, of course, that's where 90% of their production value is going to go. Because when they throw out a new Mutants and Masterminds book, it sells like hotcakes because it's always top-notch. The art is always phenomenal, and the mechanics are solid. 
that's what makes them money. They gotta go. I mean, you know, if you want to support them, buy more of these books. Tell your friends to buy the books. You know, when they vote with your wallet, if everybody buys the book and they have to do a second print run or a third print run, that tells them, hey, this product is hot. We need to we need to ramp production. Going into the forums and ah, oh, you guys suck. You know, you know the book is three months delayed. Rah, rah. That's not incentive to make them do do good work. That's not incentive to make them do anything. Whereas over on the mutants and masterminds fan base, they're all happy because they're getting tons of books and they're getting them pretty rapidly. And and sure, they're happy. But we modern age fans are sitting there waiting for our bestiary or are waiting for our you know Lazarus book, which I did see the Lazarus book at Barnes and Nobles. Uh, and I may try to go pick that up maybe even today. I don't know. Uh, finances are really tight. So um, if anybody wants me to get the Lazarus book, give me a nice donation off of Zelly Pay. I'll go buy it. It's like 30 bucks. Uh, but I'm a physical book guy. I don't particularly care for PDFs unless you're sending them to me for review. Uh, and then that's fine. I don't want small publishers shouldn't be spending money out of their pocket to send me product. If they want to, that's great. I love it. I love physical books. But. I, I, it, it kind of it gets me right there in, in, in the heartstrings when these companies are taking food out of their mouth to send me product that's coming out of their pocket. Uh, I, I, I don't want to be that. I don't want to be a, a contributing factor to that company that goes under because maybe I was that one extra book that they sent that caused them to not pay the bills. I don't want that. Send me a PDF. You know, once the PDF's made, it's pretty much free at that point. Any sales you make off of a PDF is just gravy. Uh, you know, so that's awesome. But anyway, neither here nor there. Um, I did see the Lazarus uh, book, which is the, the setting, uh, the default setting. And the Lazarus book uh, looks really cool because it's a, it's a futuristic setting, uh, world of Lazarus. And it's where all these big families pretty much control the world. Uh, so not even corporations, families, and you work for them and, you know, your serfs and everything. It looks really cool. I want to pick it up and give it a good read. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of intrigued by it. I'm going to run uh, Modern Age. It's going to be kind of a, uh, an introductory to the game, first of all. Um, and it's also going to be Modern Day with uh, there will be light, light psychic powers, which the players will discover over the course of uh, playing the game that they have. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. Um, so I have, of course, the Modern Age book. And then I have the probably one of the best GM screens on the market just for the sheer. Uh, I think the only GM screen that comes close to this and quality and, and uh, versatility and usability is the Iron Kingdom's GM screen because it came with a whole bunch of stuff. It was a four panel screen and it was really well done and phenomenal art. Um, but uh, the Modern Age GM screen and the Fantasy Age GM screen and the Dragon Age GM screen all do the same thing. Uh, it's a three panel uh, landscaped, which, I mean, the art is pretty cool. Some of the art's from Lazarus World, uh, and it's obviously art that's in the book. There's our iconic, iconic characters. And then on the on the GM side, you've got all the net various charts that you need. It's, it's pretty sturdy cardboard. Um, it's it's going to hold up pretty well. Um, but it's, yet it's thin enough that it doesn't take up a whole lot of space. So it's very, in my opinion, very well done. The Iron Kingdoms one is a little thicker, but it's portrait and it's huge and it's a monster. Um, but what makes this really, really worth it are these. Uh, the cards that you get with it. You get an initiative tracker. Um, you get So you get a card that has your major actions, your minor actions, and your variable actions. Um, and then on the back, it has all of your proficiencies and fo your focuses. So um, very handy to keep. It's really helpful for me as a GM because, uh, you know, I have so many games up here that I need to remember every game is different. And so, you know, it, this just is a little cheat sheet for me. I don't have to have an actual character sheet in front of me. I can just have that. Um, and then let's see what else we got. Then we've got, we've got the firearms. Uh, sheet which basically tells you about firearm these are all um, high gloss like laminate uh, paper but they hold up pretty well I mean if you bend them obviously they're going to crease uh, but they're good for uh, writing on making quick notes and things like that so you've got your firearms information here and on the back 
initiative tracker, which I like because I can just have that sitting next to me, a little dry erase or wet erase marker, and I can keep track of initiative. Or I can hand it to one of the players and say, hey, you're in charge of initiative. Uh, and it, you know, it keeps track of your rounds uh, on the left-hand side, and then you have your... Uh, your combatant, their initiative, and then any any uh, notes that you want to put. So let's say they're scared or they're stunned or they're whatever. You can put all that on there. So that's super handy. Um, and then you have vehicles, mounts, and chases. Uh, all your basic rules. So again, you don't have to flip through the rule book. And if you're using the generic GM screen like I use, which is uh, Portrait, these will fit in there quite nicely. And you don't, excuse me, they're kind of, you know, rigid. So they work really well. Um, but you got your ram attacks and everything, all, all your vehicle, all your vehicle combat information that you need is on there. Uh, the modern age introduces something new where they do uh, gritty, pulpy, and cinematic um, modes. And that's basically dictates hit points and, and things like that, how fast you recover, um, you know, depending on the mo on the mode. Uh, gritty is like, you know, you don't get a whole bunch of hit points and it's, you know, you permadeath, that kind of thing. Um, pulpy is just that. It's your, 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 you know, you're not superheroes, but you're not normal people. You're right in the middle. Um, and then, of course, cinematic mode is gonzo over the top, you know. So really cool. Uh, very helpful. And then you get some uh, player aids, uh, which are, uh, you get two uh, general general and special stunts and then on the back is firearm stunts and attitude stunts and you get one of each of these uh the information is somewhat uh actually they're all different so you have general social stunts general combat stunts and then on the back side of that you have firearm stunts grappling stunts uh attitude stunts and power stunts because it, this does allow for like psionic powers even possibly super superpowers if you wanted to run it that way so and then the third card is uh advent anti or excuse me anti-vehicle stunts chase stunts general exploration stunts infiltration stunts and investigation stunts so they really upped the stunts because in fantasy age you have basically combat stunts uh role-playing stunts and magic stunts and that's it so these really, because there's different genres of play and different things you can do, and you, you get stunt points. For those of you that don't know, just a real quick mechanics. When you, the game is 3D6, and I know I tout on all my videos that I'm not a big 3D6, or I'm not a D6 dice fan, but in this case, it really works. Um, and what you do is you roll 3D6. One of them dies has to be a different color. I'm fortunate enough to have the dragon die, from uh, the Dragon Age box set. And so what's nice about that is I use that as my dragon die. Um, and then and then I bring a bunch of D6 with me. I bring two big boxes of D6s. So two of the dice should be the same color or same style. And then one dice has to be completely different. That is your stunt die. In Dragon Age, it's called the dragon die. In Fantasy Age, I think it's they, they just call it the stunt die as well. What's nice though is you roll those three D6, you total them all up looking for a target number that the GM will assign after you add your abilities, which is usually a plus two, to, you can get a little bit higher than that. But on average, plus one, plus two, maybe sometimes plus zero, or negatives. Um, and then you want to meet or exceed a target number, so you roll those 3d6. But if any of the dice come up doubles, so say I roll 3d6 and I get two fours and a three, it doesn't matter which dice come up doubles. You look to whatever your stunt die is, uh, and whatever number is there, that's how many stunt points you generate. So the, the stunt die, a.k.a. the dragon die, tells you how many stunt points you have garnered. Um, and then you use these little cheat sheets that will go in and tell you. Like for combat, you can do an extra D6 of damage. You can take another turn. Uh, and you spend those stunt points, and you can get anywhere from one to six stunt points. Uh, you spend those stunt points to do various things. And you can break them up. So you could spend one stunt point to move, you know, and then you could spend two stunt points to take another action. That's three. You've still got three left. Then you could spend three to do extra damage or whatever the breakdown is. I don't remember the stunt codes off the top of my head. That's why I have the cheat sheet. Um, but that's the nice part. It's a neat little mechanic, and it really... 
it keeps it's it's a gimmick in the aspect that it keeps everybody invested in what's happening because at any time and I've seen I run Fantasy Age and Dragon Age quite a bit and what's nice is you know you're down on the ropes you're getting your ass beat and then you roll and the player you know rolls three d six you know and gets sixes or his stunt he rolls doubles and gets a six on the stunt die and it's enough to turn the situation around and and make it you know so much better now the bad guys necessarily the mooks and stuff don't get stunt points the the major npcs and villains do um and so that's what's cool so it's it can go both ways but typically the stunt stunt points seem to better benefit the players than they do the gm and i haven't read enough of fan of uh, modern age to see if that's still the case because there are quite a few rules changes in here uh, the base mechanic is the same, but uh, I'm definitely looking forward to it. I definitely want to fire it up. Uh, I was reading a little bit last night. I'm going to make pre-generated characters. I know there's a bunch I can download, I think, off of the Green Ronin site, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to actually make the characters because what's nice about when you make the characters is it gives you a great feel for how the game mechanics work. And so I've got a, I've got a week, at a, you know, I've got basically two weeks uh, to get you know, six characters made, which is... I can probably belt out two a day, um, and I'm going to work on that here later on today. I'm going to at least do one or two. I have a form fillable. The The game is, is very well uh, uh, represented on the Internet. There's some form fillable PDFs. They're color and printer friendly as well, although I don't think they're horrible on a printer. They're a light blue uh, character sheet. Um, you can put some graphics in there if you want, but they also have a printer friendly version on the Green Ronin website and as well as uh, various other websites you can find. Um, I'm pretty sure it's on Drive Through RPG as well, so go there and check. You can buy the PDF off of Drive Through. So I'm excited to be running those two games at uh, uh, Ostacon. Uh, like I said, if you're going to be in the area, you know, in in basically two weeks, stop on by and say hi love to take a picture with you or you know give a shout out to you and put it on youtube uh when i do my video or if you just want to come by and say hey you know hey watch your channel love your show you know whatever uh it'd be cool it's a really small little con uh but i tend to have a lot of fun at really small cons i think when i looked last night they only had like six maybe seven rpgs listed and none of them were anything i wanted to play uh, it wasn't even like D and D and Pathfinder. It was some weird games. So I mean, and the the gentleman who's organizing the RPG part of the convention, I submitted the games yesterday evening at like seven eight o'clock, and like within an hour, he had emailed me back asking questions. So they're definitely eager to have people there run RPGs, and he did give me a big thank you for uh, signing up and, and hosting the games. So. Um, I, I hope if you're in that area or you're around that area, pop in and say hi. Uh, Daryl Carter, uh, Nerds International, big shout out to my Nerds International brothers. Uh, hopefully I, I'll see him there. That would be cool. Uh, that's in his neck of the woods. It's only about two hours from him, maybe maybe two and a half hours from him. He lives in the Twin Cities. So hopefully he'll be there. Uh, I'm going to put some notes up on my, I've already put it on my Discord page, but I'll put some up on uh, MeWe. Uh, for the con and everything, uh, advertising the con. So, because I'm super excited. I, like I said, I've gone to these small cons. I went to MagCon in uh, Texas. Uh, I can't remember the town. It's a funky, starts with a C, not canary. Anyway, uh, David Donahoe, the owner, part owner of uh, Etten Games there in uh, Humble uh, County, there just outside of uh, Houston. Um, runs it and uh he's a school teacher and it's held at the school that that he works at and it's a school for last chance kids uh you know kids that are in the system and you know violent and uh, drug addict you know whatever just kids in a bad way and it's to help them get an education and get, hopefully get them right on the on the right path and david is probably one of the nicest people i've ever met in the world um just a super nice guy and uh it's called magcon m-a-g uh, con and it's mad about games con and uh, I think they're on their ninth or maybe even their tenth year it's an amazing con small little con and one of the neatest things they do is they go around with a cart and on that cart is some like hamburgers and sodas and snacks so that you don't have to leave your game they, they drive they push this cart around and they sell stuff I mean like two bucks for a soda which yeah that's a little bit on the steep side but 
if you didn't stop off. And the school is out New Caney, New Caney, Texas, and that's the school that it's at. Um, there's not a whole lot in New Caney, so you know, and the school's kind of off the beaten path. So to stop your game, there's no soda fountains or anything like that, or soda machines. And I think there is, but I don't think they're stocked for the whole weekend because they don't come in and fill it. So they're going to run out pretty darn quick. And so you don't want to stop in the middle of your game or a game you're playing and go, oh man, I got to go run to my hotel, you know, and go get a soda if you forgot to bring them or you forgot to buy them. So this way, it's just nice that the cart drives around. You don't have to necessarily do a lunch break. You can eat off the cart. The food wasn't bad. Uh, it was like hamburgers and uh, pulled pork sandwiches that they had catered from some local area. And the prices were reasonable. So if you're ever down in New Caney uh, outside of uh, uh, Houston, Texas, go check. It's in April. I th it may have already passed. I don't know. April, May, I think, is when... when uh, MagCon happens. I'm here in Duluth now, so I obviously I can't go. Um, super nice, amazing con, well supported, a lot of fun, uh, and support these small little cons, man. They, uh, you know, like in this case, Ostacon is a uh, straight, uh, straight going to autism, man, which is super cool. Like I said, my my little brother has, is autistic. Uh, he's on the high end of the spectrum. He is self functioning, uh, but he has a nurse that comes in two three times a week. Uh, a home health nurse and she just makes sure you know he's doing his dishes he's feeding his dogs you know he's doing the things he's doing his laundry I mean but he lives on his own and he's you know he does have some assistance from from uh, the medical services to help him make sure he's taking his meds the meds that he needs to take so I think and that's what this money goes to it goes to help support kids with autism and, and adult people with autism and I think it's amazing so a big shout out to Austacon uh, Austin Minnesota Come check it out. Come see Mr. Mean. Uh, let's play a game. Let's have some fun. Let's give this convention a lot of love. And even if you can't make it to the con, remember, all the money goes to the con. So if you can maybe go to their website, maybe buy a ticket. It's $15 for the weekend, man. When's the last time you went to a convention and it only cost you $15 to get in the front door? That's amazing. Uh, they've got t-shirts and hats for sale. So even if you can't go to the convention and you want to support it, buy a t-shirt and uh, tell them Mr. Mean sent you. Uh, I'm going to post this up to the, to the guys there at the con to let them know that I'm giving a shout out. Uh, we're only 480 something subscribers, but man, we have a lot of power. Let's, let's show them, let's help support autism and uh, let's do something good for the community, man. Let's show them that gamers care. Uh, like I said, I'm going to run some conventions. I don't get paid for it. I'm doing it for fun. I paid my $15 to get into the convention. Um, and I'll put links in the show note and everything to the convention. Uh, and uh, I just think it's a worthwhile cause and it's a fun time. And like I said, I go to a lot of these smaller conventions and I have a blast and I'm really hoping to, to do the same thing here. So, uh, like I said, I'll put links in the show notes, uh, go support, you know, if you can't make it, which I totally understand, go buy a t-shirt. Then you'll have another cool t-shirt that you can, uh, gamer t-shirt or buy a ball cap if you want. I think they're both selling for $15 each. If I remember correctly, I could be wrong, but, uh, yeah, I'll put links in the show note. Check it out. Uh, as always guys, peace, love, and hair grease. And remember, Mr. Mean says, well, you guys know what I always say. Be nice. See you in two weeks.